All right, guys, I'm outside of Chasers. Last time I was here, it did not go well. I lost with aces and a three bet pot to seven deuce against some crazy Asian kid. It was pretty funny. What happened after that wasn't as funny. I lost two more buy-ins, so a total loss of $1,500. And unfortunately, I wasn't recording during most of the session. And so there's gonna be no vlog for that. Running that bad made me realize I need to go back to the basics. When I made this channel, I wanted it to just be a love letter to middle set and the poker gods have laughed at me and haven't given me any. So we're going back to the basics. At the end of the day, this is a set appreciation channel. So we have one goal today and that's to flop a set guys. If I can't do it, it's gonna be a failed session. Simple as that. I don't even care if I make like $4,000. If I don't flop a set, I'm gonna feel like a failure. Let's get into it, guys. We got a few more players here. Welcome back, everybody. We sit down at a 1-3 table and buy in for the max of $500. It doesn't take long to get involved. There's two limps, a cutoff open to 15, the button calls 15, and I peel pocket jacks in the big blind. This is obviously a pretty disturbing sight. Nobody wants to start their session in the hole, but looks like the poker gods are condemning me to do so. I make the three bet up to $75, not because I want to, but because I have to. If I could just do whatever I wanted at the poker table, I would pick up my cards, throw them in the trash, and set the bin on fire. But we're just going to take a deep breath, stick to the pre-flop charts, and see what happens. Action folds to the original raiser who makes a call, and the button gets out of the way. So we're heads up to a flop. It comes queen, queen, six, rainbow. All things considered, a pretty nice flop for pocket jacks. I continue for a bet of $50. The hijack makes the call, and it's at this point I knew I was going to lose this hand. My suspicions are immediately confirmed when the turn comes the ace of hearts. Guys, this is what I don't understand about pocket jacks. Based on my calculations, there's only three cards higher than a jack, an ace, king, and queen. How is it mathematically possible that 95% of the time, there's multiple of those three cards on the board by the river? Then the other 5%, somebody just flops a set. It's a cursed abomination of a hand, and I'm simply done playing it. Call me a nit, call me a mush, I don't care, I'm gonna be rich and laugh my way all the way to the bank. So I'm done with this hand, I check, but then the cutoff checks back, so I'm like, oh... The pocket jacks curse might have been lifted. I don't know. Maybe I'm good here. The river's a brick, and I check again, just desperately trying to get to showdown. But then the button bets out $125. I go into the tank, because I'm like, is he turning pocket tens into a bluff? I did check into him twice, and people like to bluff sometimes. Not actually. Nobody's ever bluffing. But in my mind, I'm like, maybe getting kind of a good price. I say, you know what, whatever. If you got it, you got it. I make the call and he obviously turns over ace king. At this point, the only thing I hate more than pocket jacks is myself. I cannot believe I paid this off, but you know what? Sometimes you do stupid stuff and this is a good example. I am not a smart man and yeah, I just kind of got milked. But he did suck out, so it's like, whatever. I don't know. On to the next hand. One orbit later, there's an early position limp, a hijack open to 15, action folds to me in the big blind, and I peel ace jack of clubs. I three bet to 50, and then the early position limper goes, you know what? I'm all in, and jams for $230. I've seen this movie before, so I'm already mentally checked out of the hand, but then the original Razor jams over the top for 500 so I'm even more out than I previously was, which was completely out. I muck my cards, and guess what the limp jammer had, guys? That's right, pocket jacks. What does the other guy have? Oh, ace king, ace queen, something like that? Absolutely not. He has pocket aces. I would have been drawing more dead than the wildlife in Chernobyl, but still not as dead as the guy with pocket jacks, because someone else goes, oh yeah, I folded a jack too, when I said I had ace jack. 
pocket jacks. A confirmed cursed hand, and I don't want to hear otherwise. King is king. Is king aces. This next hand, there's an under the gun open to 12. Action folds to me in the big blind, and I defend with king nine of hearts. The flop comes ace, queen, 10 with two hearts. Pretty great flop. I check and under the gun checks back. We get there immediately when the seven of hearts peels off. Now I got the king high flush with a redraw to the straight flush. I check and flow and under the gun throws out a bet of $10. Tons of stuff to get value from, sets, two pairs, straights, straight draws. I check raise to $50. Under the gun thinks for a second and ends up making the call. So really looking to fade a board pair, but feeling pretty great. In the river is the jack of spades. Couldn't drill the absolute omega nuts, but still feeling pretty great, obviously. Now I have to decide how much I want to bet, and I think I made a mistake here, guys. I bet $200 targeting any King X holdings that now river to straight. I like this sizing if I don't have a King. I block my opponent from having a hand that can call a big bet. I should be betting smaller targeting hands like sets and two pairs. My greed is immediately punished. Under the gun thinks for a bit and ends up folding pocket tens face up. Just a horrible river. Any other card besides a King or a Jack and I get paid. But at least the board didn't pair so. Can't be too upset. Here I pick up pocket aces, open to 20 in middle position over a limp, and everybody folds. 20. Been raised twice in one hand. Next, the hijack and cut off limp, and I peel king six of hearts on the button. I open to 20. It folds around to the cutoff, who asks if I'm just playing my position, I say, no, dude, I would never do something like that. I'm an honest poker player, and he folds. I flash him the king of hearts, and my table image is restored. <laughs> Whatever. The very next hand, action folds to the guy who just questioned my integrity. He opens to $15, and I peel jack four of hearts. I have two cards with the same shape on them. I make the call. Everyone else folds and we're heads up to a flop of 9-9 nine, nine deuce with one heart. The hijack checks and I decide to go for a bluff here with my backdoor equity. I make it $15. The hijack then turns to me and goes, you're telling me you connected with that board? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I can have a 9. Pocket deuces. I have a jack, which is only two cards away from a 9. He's not buying it though. He sticks in the money and we're off to a turn, which comes the jack of clubs. Pretty funny to turn top pair against a very suspicious opponent. He checks and I bet $25 this time for value. He doesn't take too long, sticks the money in and we're off to a river which is the three of diamonds. He checks one more time and I decide to check back. I think maybe I can be charging hands like eights and sevens and sixes and stuff like that but it felt a little thin in the moment. He tables king 10 off and we take this one down. All right, guys, not joking. There's seven limps to me in the big blind, and I peeled jack 10 of diamonds. One of my very favorite hands. Would much rather have this than pocket jacks. I think that's GTO. Everyone knows that. I pause for a second because I know I'm going to raise, and then the button goes, just do it, dude. Looking at all these limpers, and I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm obviously going to do it. I pick up $45 and throw it into the middle. All the limpers start folding, but... I do get one caller, a player in the low jack. So we're going to be heads up to a flop. It comes queen, nine, three, rainbow. I know after this pre-flop action that he can't really be too, too strong here. I have a much stronger range, ace, queen, pocket queens, pocket nines, stuff he's never going to have. Plus, we're open-ended boys. One of my favorite feelings in poker. I like being open-ended more than having a flush draw, I think. But it's close. The problem with flush draws is that when you hit your flush, everybody knows you hit your flush. The OMC across the table who's half asleep knows it, the dealer knows it, and especially the dude you're in the hand with. So for that reason, I like the sneaky open-enders a bit more. Anyway, back to the action. 
I continue for $35 and the low jack doesn't take too long before he makes a call. The turns of brick, the five of hearts. So I'm still sad here with jack high, but I'm never going to let a dude who limps and then calls $45 preflop win this hand. So I go for a big bet. I make it $100 to go. He looks at me like, dude, I know you're full of shit, but I have pocket sixes I can't really call. So congrats. Here's your money. We got the fold this time, but you guys are probably wondering what I would have done if I bricked the river. And that would have been jammed for $300. Luckily, it didn't come to that, but I was completely prepared to punt off my entire buy in here. All right, guys, it's double board bomb pot time. The top board comes jack, 10, 5, rainbow, and the bottom board comes queen, 6, 7, rainbow as well. I peel 10, 9 for middle pair on the top and a gut shot on the bottom. It checks all the way to the button who bets $30. Action folds all the way back to me in the cutoff and I decide to peel one here. I can make a couple really strong hands on both boards, so I don't hate peeling. Heads up to two turns, the top board comes a beautiful 10 and the bottom board comes a 9, so we improve to trips on the top and second pair on the bottom. I decide to lead out here for $100, try to get him off a chop, but then he snap jams for $165 total, so I'm obviously never folding. The top river is an ace and the bottom river is a deuce, so I turn over my three of a kind feeling pretty good. But the button turns over King Queen for Rivered Broadway and a better pair on the bottom board. So I lose a few hundred bucks in this hand and it just sucks. I'm starting to really, really hate bomb pots and I think I'm going to start sitting them out. I just get rivered brutally every single time. I'm not saying I like played this amazing or whatever, but I just can't take it anymore. I'm just going to sit out like an 80 year old nit. I don't care. <laughs> This next hand, there's two limps to me in the big blind, and I peel pocket aces. This is more like it. We make it $20 to go, and both the limpers call. So we're three ways to a flop of eight, seven, five, all diamonds. Yes, I have the ace of diamonds, but this flop is absolutely disgusting, guys. I obviously check. Action actually checks around. So we're three ways to a turn, which comes the queen of clubs. I check. The middle position player checks and then the button bets out forty dollars as stupid as it sounds i think aces without the ace of diamonds is just a fold here like they're gonna have sets two pairs made flushes all that stuff way more often than i will and they're just better hands to call but with the ace of diamonds i decide to call i can still improve to the nuts or hit my set so i think a call is fine the middle position player folds so we're heads up to a river it bricks out the deuce of clubs. I check and the button goes all in for $82. This just needs to be a fold, but something in my brain is broken. Like I know for a fact I got sucked out on, like it's fine, whatever. I'll save my $82, but I just need to see to be 100% sure that I am the least lucky person in the entire world and cannot win with pocket aces to save my fucking life. So I stick in the $82 and he has queen seven offsuit. Like, what the fuck is going on? I, It doesn't make any sense. I cannot win with pocket aces. This hand has cost me so many thousands of dollars recently, and it's getting very tilting. After that abomination of a hand, I decided to go for GTO table change. First hand I'm dealt in, pocket tens in the small blind. There's a middle position open to 15, action folds to me, and I bump it up to $50. The original Razor makes a call, so we're heads up out of position to a flop of 10, 6, 7, 2 clubs. What a warm welcome to the table. This is the first time I flopped a set in about a month, so this felt really good. I see bet for $40, and he thinks for a little bit and makes the call. The turn is the jack of hearts making the board a lot more dicey. I decide to bet $50 here. I think I should be sizing up on a turn that brings in a lot of draws, but at the same time, things weren't really going too well for me, so I want to make sure I got paid off with my set. 
he makes a call and the river's an eight so pretty gross card now any nine makes a straight i'm not gonna lie i was absolutely terrified that if i bet i was just gonna get jammed on so i decided to check and then call pretty much any bet he checks back pretty quickly though i announced my set and yeah we're obviously good all right guys last hand of the session and it is quite the doozy so strap in there's an under the gun open to 15 there's three callers to me and i peel ace nine offsuit this is an obvious three bet squeeze or fold situation i do neither my fish brain starts telling me oh jason look at this awesome price you're getting there's no way you're gonna get into a bloated multi-way pot and be put in a super shitty position because that never happens in these like you're just gonna flop a full house someone's gonna have trips you're gonna get paid and buy an ipad the button makes a call as well so we're six ways to a flop of ace eight three two diamonds action checks to me i check as well i have some showdown value the ace of diamonds is good don't feel the need to bet the button however throws out a bet of 35 dollars action folds to me and i call the turn is the seven of diamonds completing the front door flush draw i check and the button throws out a bet of 55 dollars definitely can't fold now with top pair in the nut flush draw i stick the money in and we're off to a river which is an absolute brick I check one more time, and the button throws out a bet of $95. It's pretty clear I'm beat here, but I start thinking, if I jam for this guy's last $200, will he fold two pair or a set? The GTO gears are absolutely grinding in my brain, and I come to the realization that I have the ace of diamonds, ace x of diamonds is the nuts, I can have the nuts, the other guy literally can't. Therefore, this is a mandatory bluff jam spot. I take a deep breath, kiss my stack goodbye, and jam for $300 total. And he snap calls me, like, faster than I've ever been snap called, ever. I literally just say, fuck, and throw my cards away, and he tables 10-5 of diamonds. He was never folding that. It's just funny, because... Looking back, I remember like saying all in and the dealer just looking at me like, dude, are you sure? This guy 100% turned to flush. You sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, I'm all in. I take my stack, I put it over the line and yeah, I get absolutely snap called and pay the man his money. The, the worst part was though, after he stacks me, he's like, yeah, I'm going to go play some two five now. And I'm like, no. I'm supposed to be the one that's like taking shots at 2-5 and instead I'm just punting off like an idiot and playing like shit and I'm never going to play 2-5. This sucks. This guy like, oh my god. Only if I could play against myself, then maybe I would get punted into enough to be rolled for 2-5. Alright guys, that's the last interesting hand to note. I hope you enjoyed the absolute torture episode of GTO Optimized. Stay tuned. Next week, I think I'm going to be heading to the Brook. They have the uh, $1,000 every 30-minute high hand promo, so going to try to get a seat for that. Here's this week's featured comment. I was in for $1,200, out for $454, so a loss of about $750. Overall, this session felt a little punty, but that's okay. We'll get them next time, but until then, have a great week. Thanks for watching.